Hey, welcome to another video on the Java application that we're creating with uh, Enterprise Java. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make some corrections to the design of the current app. I have the current app on the screen, and you can see that not much has changed as far as the visual appearance. Everything seems to work like it did before. However, what is going to change is the background. So let's take a look over at what we are going to do to make this design better. You can see that I've created a new section in my Java resources area called business. And inside there you'll see there's a business service interface and then a class that's implementing that. Down here we have the database interface as well as the database service. So we're going to make some design changes to the app that will allow us to use the n-tiered service. So we're going to make some changes to the app because we've left out some of the intermediate layers in our design. In our application, we go directly from the front end, the presentation, directly to the back end. And so what we're going to build in this app is the uh, intermediate. So looking at it from another layer, this orange box here, the business service layer, is what was skipped in the design of the app as it currently stands. And so instead of jumping from presentation layer all the way down to the data access layer, we're going to build the intermediate pieces. So what we currently have implemented looks something like this diagram, where everything runs on one machine. What we're trying to do is to separate our code so that if the application needs to scale, we can split it up so that there might be two machines, or even in this case where we have three machines, and so the, uh, the ability of hardware to be separated and the uh, application run in pieces on an N-tier architecture is why we're doing the modifications here. It's not just to create more work, but it's actually to make the application more scalable. So that explains why we're going to have a business section and a database section with different options for database services and different options for business services. So we're going to get started on coding to make this more of a scalable application following the design principles of an enterprise application. So let's take a look at the current version of our application and what currently we have developed. If I were to go check into the Java resources, you can see I have packages for beans, controllers, and database. I have not implemented the uh, package for the business service, and the database service class is not quite what we want it to be either. So to make these changes, I'm going to make a copy of this project here and make a paste of it so that way I can go back if I need to. So web application, and I'm going to say in here this is going to be called Enterprise Improvements. So let's collapse the current version here and open up the new one that has the Enterprise Improvements and let's get started. So let's get into the Java resources and the first thing we're going to do is create a package for our business services. So let's do a new and choose package. I'll simply name it business and click finish. So let's go into the database services area and let's check out the current um, functions or the current methods that are being used in the database class. So you can see that the uh, operations that I need for my app to run properly are listed here and uh, we're going to implement those as a business service. So remember this, delete one, insert one, read all, and update one. So let's go into the business service package and let's make ourselves a new interface. So this interface is called business service interface. The first thing we should do is tell the uh, interface which implementations we plan to develop. So I'm just putting in the uh, actual methods that are already in my database service, but I'm separating them into my business service. You can see I have some importing to do here. Now these methods are going to be implemented in a business service class in just a minute. And that business service class will be calling these items that are in the database service now. So we're simply calling one item from another item to another item, a cascade effect. And the reason to do this is not to just create extra layers, 
but to separate the layers so that they can be managed by a web server and even if they are on different machines altogether, different pieces of hardware. To make this separatable, we need to add some decorators. So I'm going to use these previous ones that we've worked with before. Stateless and a local for now, and then the word alternative, which means we can have more than one business service. So now let's return to our database service class that we created earlier and check to see if we've got these correct. So yes, we are going to use these methods that are listed here. So we're kind of reverse engineering and going back and what, doing what we should have done in the design phase of our application. So I'd like to create a new interface here, which allows me to have the option of having more than one type of database service. So I'll simply call this database interface. So I want to make sure that I uh, implement the same methods that I did in the business service class. So to save some typing, I'm simply going to copy what I had just typed a few minutes ago. I'm going to add one decorator here called local. And let's import it. All right, I'm saving the changes. Now, since I have an interface, this database service should implement that. So I'm going to add some text here in the description here on line 13. So as you see, as soon as I implement the database interface, the exception error handling has some problems. So down here on these uh, second, third, and fourth um, methods, we have to fix this. So I'm going to erase the uh, exception handler there, or that, and let's go fix it internally. I'm going to look down here to see where the uh, actual uh, exceptions need to be uh, implemented. So right here in the close and the close statement. So let's instead of adding the throws declaration at the top, we're going to surround this with a try catch. And let's put both of these close items inside our try catch element. Okay, so that one looks like it's working, so I'm going to collapse the method. Let's repeat this process two more times. So that looks finished, and let's save the changes. So once more, we've added another layer with an interface, and the uh, design by contract is fulfilled now with the database service that we had already used earlier. While we're on this module here, let's take a look at some design that could have been done better. You can see that the connection string is listed at the beginning of every method and it's the same connection string for every method. It says here's my username and password in the connection string. So as soon as you start copying things like this more than once, you're probably doing it wrong. So the simplest solution would be to cut this out here and move it up to the level of our uh, actual um, class name here. So let's paste it into there, our connection strings, and then we can delete the references in every one of the methods. We have a single copy of our connection strings. So the database service has the uh, implementation of our interface. It has the functions that it's expecting, or the what do you call the methods that it's expecting. To make this work with our EJB principles, we need to add some decorators here so that it can be portably and easily moved around on the system. So let's choose our decorators stateless and local and alternative. We have to import all three of these. Finally, I'll save my changes. So this here is now a single copy used in all four of the methods in my class. 
So now that I have a database interface contract here and I have fulfilled it with a database service, I could theoretically add a second or even third database service to my application. So if I change from a MySQL server to a Postgres server, it would be as simple as implementing a new class here with the same methods that are in the interface. Now that this database service interface exists, let's go back into our business container here in the package and let's implement some of the uh, items that are required in our business service. So the business service interface exists. What is lacking now is a business service class. So let's create a new class and we'll implement this service. I'm going to call this thing business service one. I'm going to add the business service interface. That's what it implements. So let's push finish. So you can see that the code that is generated is expecting these four methods. Delete one, insert one, read all, and update one. Now this business service is going to rely on our database. So I'm going to inject the database interface now. And let's call this thing DB. It looks to me like I have some importing to do. So now inside of delete one, I can delete the contents and add a, another return statement. And we are going to do db dot. And sure enough, delete one is an option. Let's go to the next method, delete the content, and we're going to return a db dot insert one. Now to the array list read all. And finally, we will do the update one. So the business service one is implementing all the methods that talk to the database. So remember, business services are supposed to do complicated things. In our case, it's only a single line. It is calling a request to a database. However, even though it is so simple, it is fulfilling the laws of enterprise design. Now there's a few decorators that are missing. In our EJB lessons, we had a few decorators. Let's choose local, stateless, and alternative. Let's import each of these. All right, now let's move our attention to the controller here. So the form controller class, it has a reference directly to the database service. And so this is the whole point we're trying to avoid. So we still want to use the insert one command, but instead of talking directly to a database class, we're going to talk to the business service interface. So the first thing we need to do in our form controller area is we need to do an injection. And we're going to inject the business service interface. And a good name seems like BS for this one. Let's uh, insert these with our uh, imports. And so now, instead of calling in a new object to the database service, let's uh, change this to, instead of uh, the DS object, let's have it BS insert one. So it is now connecting to here rather than directly to our class that was for the database service. Let's go down and do this three more times. Let's delete the current database object here and change this to a BS instead of a DS. Business service is actually what that means. And let's see, here's another example. Looks to me like we've got one here in line 72 as well. Let's delete that line. And instead, let's change this to a bs.readall. And now let's save our changes. Looks like we've got all the references there. Now on the imports at the top of the page, we do not need the database service anymore, so let's delete that. We are, re we are relying on the business service interface. So let's save our changes. Now there's another step and then we're done. We need to modify the beans.xml configuration file. 
So in the controller, it is told to look at the business interface item and it will pick the uh, proper class. So right now we only have one option for a class, so the alternative is business service one. We have to specify that. So let's go into our web content area and let's look in web INF. There is no beans area, so let's go right click and choose new beans XML file. Let's click finish. Let's go to alternatives. There are no alternatives specified, so we're going to add one. Let's try business first. And we're looking for business service one. And finish. The other option is database services. So let's do another add here. We're looking for the class called database services. And click finish. We can look at the source to see that we've got both of these listed here. These reference the classes that are currently in our process and our production area. So let's close and save our changes. Now if we did everything right, we can run this application. So let's see if we can do a run on the server and our application should work as it did before. So I can edit an item, change a value and click OK. If I choose to delete something, it is re-deleted, and we should be able to make a new thing. So it appears like all of the operations with our database are working. This video here shows you a change in refactoring. So we've created a business service and also an alternative for database service. This allows us for future growth. For instance, if the business service needed to change for some reason, we could modify it and move it to another server without affecting the actual code in our controller. Also with a database interface. If we decided instead of MySQL to be our database inter interface op impl implementation, we could Im implement a different kind, such as an Oracle or a Microsoft SQL Server, and our interface would be able to point to an alternative class instead of the one that we've developed here.